Lady Charmaine, and my guest today was one of the stars of the 2015 biopic Straight Outta Compton. He has appeared in television shows like Judging Amy, Leverage, and Friday Night Lights. And he's here today to talk about WGN's new hit show, Underground. Help me welcome Mr. Aldous Hodge. Hey. Show. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? I am great. I just want to let you know how much I love the show Underground. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more in a minute. But I also wanted to say congratulations on being renewed for a second season. So how exciting is that? <laughs> That's, it's amazing. It's, I mean, it's uh, it's that one thing you hope for, you wish for, and you know it's never a done deal until it's done. And the fact that we got the good word, uh, that fantastic because we get to to hit it one more time. You know what I mean? You know, it was so funny because um, my whole family, we all watched the show. And my uh, daughter, she, she said, I wonder, are they going to get a second season? I was like, you know, I don't know. I sure hope so. And then when I read you got a second season, I had to let them know this show is fantastic. But uh, first, I want to let the audience know. <laughs> I want to tell you something. I was so happy when I read this because I was wondering what happened to you. Many people don't know that you were the original Dur- Durin Davis Davis in the pilot for the game. <laughs> I was, I was. Yeah, and um, I, <laughs> what wow. happened? What so, happened? So we, honestly, I don't even know. Um, I just, uh, you know, woke up one day and, and realized that I was fired. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was kind of crazy. But, um, you know, I was upset at the time, but then I realized much later, like a few a few months later, I, I booked my... Um, recurring role on Friday Night Lights, and then right after that, I put leverage. So it was, it took me some months, almost a year, to realize what the point of it all was. Mm-hmm. But what I understood is that the game was removed out of my path for me to be exposed to my proper path. It was mm-hmm. God moving something out of the way to put the right thing in front of me so I can go get it. And I'm actually so grateful for having been removed. And that's not not to throw any negativity towards the game at all. It's just I understand where I was supposed to end up because had I done the game, it might have led me down a different path that did not lead to underground. So I see where I'm at now. I understand there's a bigger picture and a reason for everything and that I will not always understand the bigger picture, but my steps are layered. And I just need to follow the path because there's a, a benefit and opportunity in what you think you, you lose. A lot of people may lose something and think, ah, oh, dang, like, I missed out, you know, the world is ending, <laughs> you know. Because at the time, like, I lost my job, but I also had a house that I couldn't pay for, you know, because I lost my job. I had a car, I got in, into a car crash mm. right during that time. And thank God I was okay, but my car was totaled. So I had no car. I had a house I couldn't afford, and I just lost this job that was my answer to it all. So pretty much it looked like my whole world was coming down. Plus, I was in a bad relationship, too, so I had that stress to deal with. Mm. Um, it was a lot on me, but honestly, it was like, it was one of those surreal situations where I woke up a little later and said, oh, okay, I understand now that whenever you lose something, it's, it's not like a door is closing. It's mm-hmm. a revolving door. You just have to make the choice in that moment to wallow in your grief or realize the true potential of the moment and say, oh, this is an opportunity to go really go get mine. So let me get my, my head on my shoulders right and go get mine because I still got to do work, you know, still work to do. I know that's so right. So I couldn't be more grateful for having been my I was going to say, I know that's right, because what you're saying is so true. It reminds me of a scripture that says all things work together for the good. You couldn't see the good in it at the moment, but right. now you're able to see. And that came with maturity. So thank you for sharing that story. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. You know, and granted, like I said, it does take putting in the work. You know, you have to still be active. And that's the hardest part. People get back up on their feet and say, you know what? This is all going to work out. Let me go out there and get it. You know, you still got to hustle. Um, and that's, I think, the defining factor between people that actually make it and the ones that unfortunately um, lose their way is they forget they still have a job to do, which is they owe themselves, you know, to get back on the horse. They owe themselves and they got to just do it. 
And my mom is a fan of yours because she's been a fan of you since Leverage. So I want to give a shout out to my mom. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And you also, uh, you started as MC Ren and Straight Outta Compton. And I'm like, boy, you look so different from Straight Outta mm-hmm. Compton to the character you're playing now in Underground. So what an exciting moment because you grew up during the time of NWA. What was it like for you to be able to play a character from a group that, had, that was groundbreaking? Um, it was cool. I mean, it was weird. Actually, I'm, I'm 29 now, so NWA formed around 85 or 86. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was born in 86. Mm-hmm. So I grew up kind of during the individual times when Ice Cube was doing his thing, like individually, Dre was doing his thing individually. And I remember rocking to friend, but friend as a solo artist. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity to be able to tell this particular story for this particular generation was pretty awesome because it's never going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Even if I do another biopic, it's, it's never going to be the same. I have the same effect as this particular group because, I mean, you know, God rest easy soul, but, you know, the majority of these people are still here. They're still alive. And we were able to kind of engage two different generations, the generation that grew up with them and the generation that, knows them but they don't realize they know them they listen to the music but they don't know the history so we're able to teach people and give people at the same time a very familiar experience um it was just cool on, on a lot of levels to be involved with this kind of project so it was good now let's talk about my favorite wednesday night show underground which leave you yeah. on pins and needles at the end of every single show where you gotta go and you can't wait till wednesday talk about oh it's gonna be good next week so tell me about this new water cooler <laughs> talk show <laughs> and, and tell me uh to let the audience know in case they don't watch it the character you play um well, thank you so much for, for first referring to it as a water cool talk show. Uh, that is awesome because that's something that, um, you know, in the world of TV, is like one of the things that you want to be. You want to be that show that people go to work and they're like, yo, did you see it? Did you see it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, mm-hmm. That is it. Um, I play no, uh He's a blacksmith on the Megan Plantation. He's been a slave all his life, but he's heard the rumor of black people being free up in the north, so he's the one who's recruiting people on the plantation and making a plan to run for freedom because he's tried before, he's gotten beat before, but he realizes he needs other people's skills and assets to get the thing done. Um, but he's just very, he's just fortitude is, is, is fantastic. He knows that he's supposed to be free. He's going to do anything he can to get it. But um, for those that don't know me, it's a, it's a beautifully layered show. The characters are wonderfully descriptive. And the show itself, what I think... The reason why I was so successful is because it's not about, I mean, yes, slavery is the catalyst for mm-hmm. our journey and our story. However, it's about people. It's about the mindset and and what's wrong and what's right with this particular time and how people feel. It's about empowering Black Americans who are enslaved and showing them for their brilliance and their intelligence. It's about empowering the, the idea in the ideals of white abolitionists and giving them credit for having worked to fight against slavery back in that time. You know, a lot of people don't really give them credit. It's about empowering the idea of America working together um, on, a, on a larger front and this, you know, depicting the first integrated civil rights movement, because especially in today's time, we realize we need to work together more than ever as a country, as a culture. Um, to, to continue expounding and building on this country's future. So this show is representative of so many great things. And I think that's the reason why people really enjoy it because it's really, it's, it's quite an adventure and it's mm-hmm. a psychological thrill ride, but mm-hmm. you know, it's really showing different, different uh, avenues and different, different, uh, different, I would say, consequences of wrong thought uh, uh, and, and right thought, you know, challenging one another. Uh, that's what I love most about it. It's really that it's it mental. It's a mental game. This entire show is a mental game. <laughs> it's so fun trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. Cause I tell you this month, mm-hmm. you'll never get it right. <laughs> you will never guess right. Next, next tomorrow's episode, poof, you are not ready. Y'all are not ready for what happened. It's so, it's so funny because... Dang. 
All this, you guys brought back talking to the TV again, talking to the characters, getting mad at the characters. Why you do that? I don't like him. You know, don't trust him. I mean, we're <laughs> talking out loud to the television. See, that's when you know you got a good show. I love people are sitting there yelling at the television. They're like, y'all know they can't hear you. Nobody can hear you. Right. <laughs> but don't, you know, you just keep doing your thing. You keep looking like a crazy person yelling at the TV. But we, the fact that people get so emotionally engaged like that mm-hmm. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It is. It, you know, that's, we serve to entertain. You know, a lot of people didn't realize this was going to be an action show. They thought it was going to be like a documentary. It's like, no, this is an action show. It's a thriller. And like I said, the second, it's first an action show. Secondly, it's a psychological thriller. And that's what ties people in because there's the, the action that gets the blood going. There's the, the, psychology that kind of gets their minds racing and they're trying to figure it out and you get tied to characters that as you've seen not everyone is safe no one is safe you never know who's going to make it who's not you never know know what's going to be made so no ah yeah oh Henry Henry. I I was pretty pretty sad about that I I was was pretty sad about everybody (laughs) um I was pretty sad about everybody who died because you know, selfishly, I was like, you know, I, now I won't be able to continue working with this actor. You know, Henry, who's played by Renwick Scott, Renwick is, is a great young actor. And, you know, when we, we didn't know Henry was going to, you know, find his fate. Um, and honestly, we still don't know, still really don't know yet. Uh, you'll, you'll realize next episode what, what really goes on with Henry. But, um, we didn't know what was going to go on. But when you read these scripts and, you know, you see characters like Zeke go out, like, dang, like, for me as an actor, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to work with Theo anymore. Theo is playing and play Zeke. Um, he's a great guy, you know. And But we also don't get a heads up. So the character for us dies as well. As mm-hmm. actors on the set, we didn't know this going into it. And we're like, dang, now it's just like, we're dropping like flies. <laughs> And then after that, after we mourn the death, <laughs> yeah, after we mourn the death of a character, we hurry up and skip to the back end of the page of the script to see if that if we're still alive. <laughs> I know, know that's right. Huh? So we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't we, look. You'll see. You'll see tomorrow, but we're we're not even sure if no one made it. So. Uh, with yeah, this is gonna, this is a great show, and all this I know you have to go, but I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show, and I want to remind the audience to make sure that you tune in Wednesday nights to Underground on WGN yep. ten nine Central. It's a cliffhanger, it's a nail biter. You'll be talking to the television, and you really do all this get emotionally <laughs> involved because we and my daughter talking and she washing dishes, looking at the TV, you know, to the TV because you know the young boy when he was singing, his mama was you singing, so <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see her out. They're looking crazy. First, she looked all pretty. And my daughter's like, what yeah. just happened? Oh, my God. Go go back, Mama. Go back. <laughs> so we rewinded the television. So thank you for bringing good TV back. <laughs> um, and, and thank you. You're thank welcome. Because you so our audience is what got us the second season. Our audience is what created the accolades and the three million viewers a week and all these, these great things that came about. I mean, you know, as a crew and a cast, we did. We put our foot in it. We, we wanted to do the best way possible. But the audience had to show up, and they had to show up continuously. Mm-hmm. And that is, um, that keeps volume to us. So we're so grateful. I just want to say thank you. I mean, on behalf of WGN, Sony, Tribune, our cast, our crew, our creators, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for the support. You got to see it to a second. Well, you, well, you are so welcome. Lady Charmaine, I'm on riding